We live on a radioactive planet. When life on Earth first began billions of years ago, radiation levels would have been even higher than they are today. The cells in our bodies have evolved to survive in a radioactive environment. Even our own bodies are radioactive. All our lives, we are constantly being bombarded with radiation from many different sources. In the U.S., the average radiation dose from natural sources is 310 millirem per year. Cosmic radiation from the sun and other stars is an ever-present source of exposure. The Earth's atmosphere acts like a shield, blocking most cosmic rays, but if you go to a higher elevation, like Denver, Colorado, you receive more exposure than you would at sea level. Natural deposits of radioactive elements like uranium and thorium also contribute to our background dose because they emit radon, a radioactive gas. Areas near large deposits often have much higher background radiation levels than other places. For example, some areas of India and Brazil have background radiation levels of 3 to 5 rem per year. The food we eat is also radioactive, mostly due to carbon-14 and potassium-40. Some of the most radioactive foods are Brazil nuts, lima beans, potatoes, and bananas. We know that radiation is all around us, but how dangerous is it? Current radiation protection standards are based on extensive studies of Japanese survivors of the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Studies of the survivors observed that cancer incidence was higher among individuals receiving the highest dose and that the incidence of cancer decreased when the dose was reduced. Because of these and other studies, we know quite a lot about the effects of radiation at higher doses where risk is approximately proportional to dose. However, at lower exposures, the risk, if there is any, is difficult to study due to the presence of background radiation. The most commonly used model for radiation exposure, called linear no threshold, or LNT, takes the well understood risk versus dose relationship at higher levels and extrapolates downward to doses for which there is no definitive relationship between risk and dose. Basically, LNT says that any increase in dose causes an increase in risk, and there is no completely safe dose. Because of its conservative nature, LNT is the accepted policy of many government agencies, including the NRC and EPA. However, many scientists are critical of the LNT model, pointing out the lack of conclusive evidence that risk is proportional to dose at lower exposures, and the growing evidence that it is not. Critics of LNT say the evidence points to a threshold dose, around 10 rem, below which there is no risk from radiation exposure. The current regulatory requirement for working around sources of radiation is the ALARA principle, which is based on the LNT model. ALARA, which stands for as low as reasonably achievable, is followed by making the dose received in any release of radioactive materials as small as possible. Because LNT and ALARA focus on making dose as small as possible, they reinforce the perception that radiation is always dangerous at any dose. This can confuse the public into thinking that low-dose radiation is more dangerous than it actually is and cause unnecessary fear. For example, after the huge earthquake and tsunami in Japan last March, the media quickly focused its attention on the Fukushima nuclear accident because of the public's fear and misunderstanding of radiation. So far, there have been zero radiation-related fatalities from Fukushima compared to 18,000 from the natural disaster. Although there is no definitive evidence to support the LNT model's risk versus dose relationship at low dose levels, LNT and ALARA policy impose significant costs on the government and industry to limit low-level radiation exposure for little or no benefit. While it is important to respect radiation and work safely, we should not act like it is more dangerous than it really is. Better explaining the real risks of radiation and creating more sensible regulation will make it easier to promote the use of nuclear technology to benefit society.